In the United States, an Ivy League university degree is still a pretty reliable ticket to secure a top job. But to actually get there, it takes brains, but also a lot of money. That's unless you get a stipend to keep you afloat. So kids from disadvantaged social backgrounds hardly ever make it. That's unless they visit one of the best American schools. And there's one right at the heart of one of Washington's toughest neighborhoods. A place full of high potential students. Here's why. Florine Bachelor is a single mother. She wants her son to have the best education she can give him. Yeah, he's graduating this year. And I am really excited. I just can't wait. And he's been offered a scholarship to Howard University. Uh, we are looking at GW as well. We'll see eventually. But I want to keep him close to home. And he wants to work politics here in the district. So we decided that he would stay here. On his way to school, Marcus passes through Anacostia, a predominantly African-American neighborhood in southeastern Washington, D.C. Washingtonians have long thought of Anacostia as a place without prospects. No jobs, no future, but lots of crime. The average income of its residents is some $14,000, about half that of the rest of the country. Unlike other schools in the area, the kids who attend the Thurgood Marshall Academy aren't searched for weapons. The teachers trust them. Most students here work hard. 18-year-old Marcus is ambitious and earns good grades. I think it's great at Thurgood Marshall Academy that you have the atmosphere where you are an active learner, but also where you're free to explore um, your own passion in life and career. A career used to be something most of Anacostia's young people couldn't even think about. Until Joshua Kern, along with associates and professors from Georgetown University, opened the school in 2001. We used the, the Georgetown University Law School setting um, as a place where we could um, think through the best practices for high school. And we had folks from all over the country, educators, come and talk to our group about what's working in urban education at the high school setting. The students themselves developed a concept based on ironclad rules and responsibility for their own work. Now some 400 teenagers from the troubled neighborhood attend the Thurgood Marshall Academy. 100% of our students are accepted to college. We're the highest performing open enrollment high school, charter or traditional, in the city. Um, and we're, you know, now considered to be one of the best public high schools in the country. Marcus and many of his fellow students still feel disadvantaged in the United States job market, mainly because of the country's race relations. I mean, I have friends who are not too fond of taking the subway, you know, into Anacostia. Um, you know, there, there are people on you know, the other side of the river that wouldn't even think about coming to this part of town. The teachers at Thurgood Marshall Academy are proud of their students' achievements. They know what kind of obstacles they face. On average, half of the adults in this neighborhood are illiterate. You have the highest crime rate, highest teen pregnancy rate, highest murder rate. So the statistics are never good. But our kids are proving to everybody that when you look at, when you do something good with our kids, the kids are not the problem. It's the adults. For many of the kids, the school is a home away from home. The young people here are from a broad range of backgrounds and differ greatly in their abilities. The teachers try to help them individually. There are families who we call and they say, do not call me, I don't care. There are other families who want to know everything that's happening but that's gonna vary from kid to kid. And so in each case, we have to work together to figure out among the administration, among the teachers, how do we get this kid to be successful? More than two thirds of the families don't have the money to pay for their kids' lunches. The school helps them out. The academy wouldn't be able to operate without the support of private donors and its 250 volunteer staff members. All the students are African-Americans, but many of the teachers are white. Now and then, that can be a thorny issue. When we teach about slavery, the students have a natural inclination to want to say, this is me, the slave is me. 
and you did this to me. And we have to sit back and remember, none of us was a slave, none of us was a slave owner. We have to, you know, separate history from today, but still relate the two together. Donations from American corporations help to keep the academy in state-of-the-art technology, which helps keep students like Marcus motivated. So we have computers um, and we have kind of the latest up-to-date technology. So it's good to explore these new technologies, bring the knowledge that we have in um, and kind of improve on those because, you know, the world's becoming more, uh, you know, technologically savvy. And so we have to keep up with it. So are the modern equipment and dedicated teachers the secret of the school's success? We don't buy into the excuses because there's a hundred excuses why our kids shouldn't be successful. But we don't believe in them. We believe they can be successful. So the secret is really hard work. An elite academy in a troubled area, given the will and the right parameters, anything's possible. My immediate goal um, is to eventually run for mayor of Washington, D.C. So that's my goal, yeah. Who knows? For Marcus and the kids of the Thurgood Marshall Academy, the opportunity is now there.